Right, let's have a look at something called the Miller OR model. And what that does, it accepts that cash flows don't just go in a straight line up or a straight line down. There's variability of cash flows. So how much cash we should hold, the Miller OR model tries to allow for that variability. So first of all, it says, look, we're going to set a lower limit. That's we always want this amount in our bank account. OK, so we can't allow the cash to go below that, the cash level. All right. So that's the lower limit. And when we reach it, we need more cash, don't we? So we need to get more cash by either at all those different points there by either getting money from the deposit account or from selling shares something like that. But we need to get more money at that stage because the Miller Law model says, right, first of all, that's what you do. So it's a it's a manual thing. It says also that you should calculate, notice the word calculate, you don't set it. You calculate the upper limit, and I'll show you how you do that in a minute. And so what it suggests is, look, never let your bank balance go above this upper limit because then it's wasting money. And what you should then do when it's reached, you've got too much cash at those points, so we need to use that cash. We need to buy shares or we need to put it into our deposit account or something. So can you see what Miller Law does? It sets two limits and then it allows for cash flows to go up and down in between them of its own free will. And only when we reach the limits do we have to do something. More on that later. Right. So we've got our cash flows and we've got our cash balances, the lower limit and the upper limit. The difference between the two is something that we call the spread. All right. So the spread just allows the cash flow balances to go in between the upper and the limit, the lower limit. So it allows for that variability in cash flows. So at the upper limit, at the lower limit. So at the upper limit, what do we do? We've got too much cash. So we put it into deposit or we buy shares. At the lower limit, we haven't got enough cash. So we take it out of deposit or we sell shares. Anything in between, we're okay with. It allows for some variability in cash flows. So far, so good then. We know that is the spread. I said to you, first of all, you, you manually set the lower limit. That's up to the directors. But then step two is to actually calculate the spread. And then step three, you've already calculated the upper limit then, haven't you? Because the upper limit must be the lower limit plus the spread. So the question is, well, that's okay, Richard, you've set the lower limit. How do we calculate the spread? Okay, so this is how you calculate it. It's given in the, uh, in the exam. And just a couple of things I wanted to point out. The variance of cash flows, all right, you might be given a standard deviation. Don't worry about that, that mathematics. If you get a standard deviation, just square it. And the interest rate should be a daily interest rate, okay, and show it as a percentage. All right, so daily interest rate, show it as a percentage. So there should be lots of zeros on that. Okay, so here's a question for us. We have daily cash flow variance of 4 million. That's the variance of the cash flows. That's fine. Cost of buying and selling shares is 50 pounds. That's the, that's the selling, putting money into deposit or taking out of deposit or buying shares or selling shares. That's the transaction cost of each time we do that. And then finally, the daily interest rate, good. That's what we want, 0.025%. As that's a percentage, you need to put another two zeros in. So that'd be 0 0.00025. Okay, let's go and do that. That's the interest rate. So we're going to put all that into a spreadsheet. So here we are on the spreadsheet then. Uh, so you need a little formula. So you want, uh, first of all, you want your... Uh, three quarters, which is 0.75. And then it's just simply times by cash flow variance times by transaction cost divided by interest rate. Okay. Now, if you remember all of that, so put all of that in brackets then, is to the power of one third, 0.33333. And then all of that again times by. Three. That's how you do it. And that will give you your spread of 23, 25, So we've got our spread in. So far, so good. So we now know then that the lower limit, let's say it was set at 5,000. Remember, that's the manual thing that gets put in. We know the spread is 25,303. So the upper limit must be the lower limit plus the spread of 30,303. 
Now, at the lower limit, we need to get more cash by either selling shares or getting it from deposits. And at the upper limit, we need to kind of get less cash. We've got too much. So we need to buy shares, buy investments, or put some money on deposit. The question is, how much? Okay, so let's have a look at how much we need to sell or buy or whatever. You always want to, so when we get to the limits, we need to do something. You want to return the cash balance to what we call the return point. And as you can probably tell there, the return point isn't exactly in the middle. It's actually one third of the way up. Okay, so one third of the spread added onto the lower limit. So the, the return point is your lower limit plus one third of the spread. Let me explain what would happen then. So we have our cash balance and it goes up and it goes up. And then it looks like we're going to have too much money. When we have too much money, then what we need to do is put some on deposit. How much? enough to bring us back to the return point. Now we seem to be at a lower limit, so therefore we need to get money out of deposit. How much? Enough to get us to the return point. Allow for some variability in cash flows. Then our cash flows go down, we haven't got enough, so get some money out of the deposit account. How much? Enough to get us to the return point. Now it looks like we've got too much money, so let's put some money back on deposit. How much? Enough to get us back to the return point and so on and so forth, get to the lower limit. We haven't got enough, sell shares, get it from the deposit account. How much to get us to the return point? So you're always trying to get back to that return point. So we said the lower limit was 5,000, the spread was 25,303, and the upper limit was 3,303. We said when it gets to the lower limit, we haven't got enough cash, so we need to get some money out of deposits or, uh, or sell some shares, sell some of our investments, Question is, how much? Well, enough to get us back to the return point, which is the lower limit plus one third of spread. At the upper limit, we've got too much cash, so we need to get rid of it by buying investments or sending some money to the deposit account. How much? Enough to get us to the return point, which is the lower limit plus one third of spread. So in this case, that came to 13,434. That will be your return point.